I think, well, you know, when you look at the private sector, even though a lot of people say they haven't been participating in health, in Africa, they, in one way or another, participate, especially in the rural areas uh, where they might be the sole providers of health. But uh, their contribution has never really been recognized, and this is why people think it's only public sector. But for family planning, um, there hasn't been much involvement, and we really need to make sure that we get the private sector to be involved in family planning. And maybe because, you know, the private sector uh, everything is business. Everything has to have a profit angle uh, to it, and they don't think um, family planning might uh, really bring in, be able to harness the profits and the returns, the gains that they, they are looking at. Uh, but I think we've had a huge paradigm shift uh, recently with a lot of uh, companies engaging in corporate social responsibility. And I think they've realized that they need to um, put back into the community and also um, look after their uh, employees uh, much better than they were. Um, the HIV uh, uh, program was really very successful and they've really demonstrated that, you know, with commitment and investment, you can really bring a huge difference. Africa was suffering as a result of the HIV pandemic. I know many people were dying. Many people were, um, you know, were being absent from duty and productivity suffered. But when the private sector really put in money, you saw differences because people were being saved as a result of that huge investment. And they were able to go back to work and become more, pro more productive because they were satisfied. They had an employer who was looking after them. And so really, for me, I would age the private sector uh, to just integrate uh, the services. We need to integrate so that we are more holistic, so that we prevent people moving from one place to another, trying to access uh, different uh, services. We need to start breaking those silos, you know, and the best way of breaking the silos is to integrate uh, the services. Family planning, um, you know, even it's costly, but uh, it's only costly in the initial phase. What you get out of it is uh, really amazing. You know, there are a lot of benefits that can go to a private uh, company. As I said, they save money. Um, you know, as opposed to setting up different clinics or tackling different uh, products, that would require a lot of human resource. But if they're able to integrate, they will be able to kill so many beds with just one stone and really bring in the services closer to the people and the community that they save. Some of the challenges we've had with the private sector is uh, when it comes to the issues of training. Um, you know, when you're talking about family planning and especially the methods that require some surgical procedures of some kind, that takes time for somebody to have uh, competence-based uh, training. And we've had issues in trying to mobilize the private work sector to really, you know, come for training and for about a week because to them, Every minute is money, and they start counting money. Um, so we've been trying to see whether we could come up with uh, on-the-job training modules so that at least somebody can go into their premises and train them uh, right there. The issue of uh, commodity security has also been an issue uh, in Zambia, but uh, we are now talking with Zambia to see whether the government will be able to subcontract uh, the private sector to be able to increase access to um, family planning. So government will procure the methods and be able to give the private sector uh, to offer the services at some minimal uh, cost because we know that you know, they need to, it's not easy for any private sector to offer free services, but at least that they can charge for their labor and so on, but uh, uh, not put a charge on the, on the commodity. But having said so, I think it would really be nice if we could attract certain um, private sector to be able to come and set up, um, you know, uh, plants in developing countries and be able to start developing implants in Zambia. That would really be nice because then you bring the market closer 
to Africa as opposed to getting the market uh, from outside. It will be nice to have generic uh, formulations being set up in Africa, so at least the markets, and I'm sure it will become much, much, much cheaper with uh, generic uh, products. I think they can, you know, they have the means, they, they have uh, the resources to be able to get involved in gender-based uh, violence. I know in Lumwana they've got a really great program. They're working with the traditional chiefs uh, in uh, reaching out to communities and talking about uh, uh, all these issues and uh, making sure that they, they give the women income generating activities and they provide the markets for them. Okay. I think we know the root cause. Women are not empowered. People, women are subordinate. And for a lot of men, the issue of gender-based violence is a show of power flexing their muscles, you know, to be known that they are men. And a lot of women are so afraid, you know, to move on because they have no means. They don't have anywhere to go. You know, we, we've uh, tried working with women where, uh, you know, they come to shelters, um, but they don't stay long in shelters because there's really nothing for them. They go back. They've got to continue looking after, after their children. And this is where companies can be able to come in and help uh, start educating their employees because they've got male employees. Um, I don't want to be seem, I don't want to seem to be uh, saying that gender-based violence is all about, uh, you know, men. But we know the story. The majority of uh, perpetrators are men. And when you look at the consequences, it seems to be harsher in women than in men. So, uh, sorry, I, <laughs> pardon me. So they can start talking and educating the, their men. They can start talking to the boys in their catchment areas, in the schools where, uh, in the communities that they are serving, so that at least the young boys are taught about the dignity, how to dignify a woman and to appreciate a woman for who she is. Because once they start growing up with such notions, they will grow up into more responsible uh, men and uh, future leaders. And the men, the employees as well, you know, if they sort of talk to them and uh, really help them steer away from some of the causes that contribute um, to gender-based violence. So there's a great niche and I hope I'll see more private sectors coming onto the platforms for gender-based violence.